Welcome to Watercolor Wednesday. My name is Kathy Futrell, and we are here at the Church of the Palms. And today we're going to be practicing some more with our Chinese brush painting. All right, welcome. Uh, I think what I want to reinforce today, before we get started with the uh, painting that we're actually going to do, which is based on creating sort of an iris, uh, water lily, can you, can you see these strokes that are here? We're going to practice these very oriental and basically we're moving from um, a Japanese bamboo idea to a Chinese brushwork. And typically ink is used for Japanese um, bamboo painting, but watercolor is used for the Chinese brushwork. We're, we're, in, we're looking at this gorgeous flow of lines Okay, so when you are holding your brush and we're using um, the bamboo brush, we're typically holding with our, if, if, I, if I use these fingers and, and kind of give you the same posture as the hand holding, I tend to try to keep the brush up and down to start with and then I tilt it to take care of whatever job I need to do. And the stroke, if you think about where you're, if you're moving a stroke, you, you have to use your wrist, you have to use your arm, and sometimes it's best to stand up when you do this, if that is more comfortable, but if, you're, if you feel good sitting down, then keep it in that position. Um, mixing the ink is done with an ink block and um, an ink stick, and you can get degrees of black and gray. You get a very diluted, so some of the watercolor, uh, some of the paintings in ink will have a different expression. So here are examples of the bamboo, where it's the trunk is light in the background. So I might review a little bit of that. Here is a, an example of using dry brush with the strokes that you make, which means that you have to take some of the moisture out of the brush. So I'll demonstrate that just real fast and then we'll move on to the next group of paintings. So here are examples of the bamboo in black and white. Here it is in color. Here are the strokes that we're going to make today with the irises. This is what we're going to do in color. Okay, so we're going to do the black and white and the color. We're, we're, we're also going to play with butterflies. Okay, now this is something I think we're going to try next week either. Uh, we may skip this. I might demonstrate this as a trunk and in, also in color. But I know that we want to do the chrysanthemum and we might also do sunflowers in the same way. So this is the last one I have as an example. But if uh, we're, we're in tune to that next week, we might just jump right into some flowers and have fun with that. So it depends on how far you want to go uh, with your painting even today. If you want to practice, there, there are pictures to look at. So I think I'm just going to work out of my sketchbook right now. But when I do this, I often put, uh, some people recommend a towel or something that can be a little absorbent, especially if you're with rice paper. I put something between the pages because it can often bleed through when what you're doing. So to do the strokes for the bamboo, let's review and then we'll go into our uh, plan for today. I use the black uh, watercolor paint rather than the ink. Okay, so um, I'm doing here, and I'm going to dab some of the moisture. I'm gonna see if I can get a dry brush out of this. And then I'm gonna dip the point of my brush. So I ha what I have done is double load. Okay, so I have the medium value, and just to hold your brush and tilt, you know, I meant to do a, a lighter value, but let's just go with this. Okay, so now we have this lovely dry brush going across. And let's do, I'm going to kind of go in reverse. I've uh, diluted that black so that I now have um, a lighter value. I still want to use the tip into a darker, a little darker paint. And let's see if this will work. I was hoping to get just a little lighter value. Let's go even lighter. So I'm trying to create a trunk now that says I'm in the background. All right, so it's a little confusing with these three trunks, but that's a good number to work with. 
Uh, and now I'm just going to use my medium black and go across to create my divisions on my uh, the, the joints that are on the bamboo. Here, I'm going to try to go a little darker on this foreground. And now I'm going to be making strokes that alternate from one side to the next. And this one is behind. And this one comes here and here. And let's do this. I'm trying to divide the, uh, the space so that there is an interesting feeling of positive and negative areas. So now the next and last stroke that you're going to be making, let's start with a lighter value, is the stroke for the leaves that are going to be in the background. Okay, so these strokes tend to have the shape and I'm following my trunks, my trees. This is my next, I want to go a little darker. And so if you lay the brush down, and of course it's not easy to do in a, in a short, a, um, a slow stroke. You have to make the strokes kind of heavy. So you're laying the brush down and lifting. All right, let's do these strokes. And so these are in front of those leaves and they have a different value. And I, I wanted to do a little overlap. A lot of this is intuitive about where you want to place. And actually I'm having to think about this a bit because this should be a value that's a little lighter. Okay, and then the same with this one. And sometimes nice little groups work. Now I'm I'm to the front tree, the trunk <coughs> of this tree. And actually this branch probably was the front. And this is the other one. And I want to go a little bigger and definitely darker. That was nice. You make it look so easy. Well, <laughs> sure does. does. Sure does. You notice that. Yeah. Linda, I didn't see you. Linda, hi, Linda. <gasps> Linda, you did get to come. I made it. Thank you, dear. <laughs> All right, so this is basically how we handled last week when we were practicing our bamboo. And then we interpreted this in color so that the bamboo strokes uh, could also have color. And this was double loading the brush with brown and using black as the tip to get that. Now, I really was um, loose uh, drier for this trunk. I kind of wish I had a little more color in that, but I'm going to have to live with that and move on to what we want to do next. And that is to do the strokes for today. I'm going to do it first in black and white, and then we're going to do it in color. So my strokes have to do with these lovely grasses. It looks like grasses, but I call this the, the uh, water lily, or water iris. So you can see by these strokes that you can try to thick and thin and bring out a tip. Um, this has a little snail in it. This is a, a little iris bud. And here I'm using just a pale to dark. In, in this particular example, it seems that the values are pretty much the same. Um, then we're going to practice the strokes for the flower, which I call an iris, um, that, that has these strokes that come from the flowers that are growing in the water. 
Now, the butterfly is taken from another little uh, Chinese painting, which I'm going to show you a butterfly or two. The chicks might be something you play with if you like. I have all the examples kind of on another little poster. I'll show you that later. All right, so the strokes I'm going to make right now have to do with value as well, and I'm using the uh, paint, the black paint, and taking a little bit of it off. And because they're going to be some short, you have to think about the variety as you, as you move through these strokes so that you're feeling the page. And I'm starting on just one side. And you see, I sort of st I'm always sort of starting at an angle, and then I tell myself, hold your brush up straight, and then do whatever movement you need to do to get that. Well, that turned out to be a short stroke. Okay, and I do want to, there, and then we'll do something a little darker, and, and also a bit, there. Uh, it, it's sort of you, compos you compose as you go along. You, you sort of look at, I have some that are further away and some that are a little closer. And then with just the tip of your brush, come through, and you are designing where you can place your flowers, your little budded flowers. All right, so here, I wanted, I wanted something to come up a little bit taller. Now we're going to do the strokes of an, of a, I think this is an, an iris. You may have to help me with this if this is what this is. I do two little strokes and then I come down and so that's the stroke. Would that be called an iris? Or would that be called, um, what would that be called? An orchid. That's what I was thinking. An orchid. You know what, it could be a little flat water orchid. But I think it's called. Um, well, anyway, call it's blue a, flags. What's that? <laughs> we call them blue flags. Blue flags. Okay. Yeah, they call called flags. Yeah. Oh, bearded, ah. bearded. <laughs> now I do want to vary the shapes mm -hmm. so that they're not all just repetitiously, and there would be a few little buds orchid. that might an orchid. If that. It, the Japanese painting I have shows it to be an orchid. Orchid. And you know, I think when, when um, I used to do this as an exercise, I just got in the habit of calling it a water iris, and, and it is an orchid. Okay. Then by just a few strokes, we suggest water. Now, we've done this as a little value study, and there are lots of different ways of making the butterfly. Uh, the butterfly is going to have kind of a, it's like I'm making a flower here. And then you just take uh, a stroke that suggests the body. Looks like it's going downhill instead of up. Let's see here. And, and we just sort of say butterfly. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's a really happy butterfly. He's just going, woo! <laughs> Uh, maybe I need to examine. Oh, I did make him going backwards, didn't I? Oh, let's try again. Okay, so this is all for practice. And uh, remember, I am no master at this approach, but I do love the, the release, the, the, the happiness one gets just by playing in with this little technique. Now, I think I like it going up like that. Okay, this looks more like the butterfly. Okay, and it just needs a a little body and just suggest its antennas. I think it's just getting that little stroke. Now you can draw into that if you want to, but uh, sometimes it's best just to leave your painting very, very simple. Beautiful. All right, so now I'm going to do quickly one in color and you're going to start practicing and having fun. All right, so if we do this in color, we obviously want to make our leaves more green. And I use.
this. This is actually 70 pounds of sketchbook paper. But remember, I tell you what, I'm going to do this because it's probably what you are going to do, is that I have a piece of drawing paper. So if I use the piece of drawing paper, then I'm going to be doing, first of all, I will do quickly drawing paper and rice paper. So if I do the, this, all right, so this is going to be in color. So here I'm going to take the green and I'm going to let it mix with a little bit of black. I do not want this to be a bright, um, I do not want this to be a bright green. I also want uh, to make a duller color and this will just be strokes of lovely light and then I will go to the darker color again mixing some black in with the green. You know, it, I, I was playing the other day and I mixed some blue with my green and it was such a nice color. So uh, don't be <coughs> afraid to try, you know, mixing first on your palette what you think would be a nice color. And I'm going to go a little darker than this in a minute. So again, it, be careful about having way too much <coughs> paint on your brush. This still feels a little light. All right, and try to get your point a little better. Let's put some blue and green and more black. Gosh, I could even put a little brown in here to make this darker. Now I got too much black. All right, let's go back to the... This will make a bold statement. All right, from here, we're going to come up. and make our strokes to add our flower. Uh, just, just had to do a little bit more. Then with our iris, that can be a blue or purple. So the blue I'm going to take, and I think I'm just gonna try, see if this works. Put a little double dip with my purple. Oh, that's pretty. Oh, that is pretty. <laughs> yeah, a color makes everything look better. <laughs> okay, so I put a little purple. All right, so I'm just trying to stay with some odd numbers. And give it a little touch of uh, little buds here. And you know, this blue purple is lovely, and it can just also be continued here uh -huh. mm -hmm. with just the suggestion of water. And my butterfly shouldn't be a purple and blue, although I love using a blue color. It might be nice to try something more yellow or orange or red. And let's see what would happen if we double, if we triple dip this now. Let's see. I need to look at my reference so I don't do my butterfly upside down again. Mm -hmm. All right, so uh, we'll go like this, and like this, and like this. And I probably would want this to dry before I try to put the black in here. And the reason for that is, of course, I, I will run. We know what watercolor does. It will run. And... The, the other little thing I might want to do here, just lo looking at this reference, I think this was a different kind of flower. This I'm going on memory about the strokes I made. It, it comes out of you once you've practiced it a few times. This has some little buds, maybe a darker purple or darker blue could uh, be presented here. Just at, while we're waiting on that to dry, just to suggest a little uh, happiness there in the middle of these, mm -hmm. these uh, flowers. And so my stroke for the center of that 
here's, uh, I hope this is dry enough. Yeah, it actually is. And if I did want to add any detail to the butterfly, because obviously there's, there's some little fun stuff that does go on with the pattern. And um, there we go. That would be um, our fun today. All right, so we're going to practice. And the handout should, should uh, keep you all informed. If you're interested in these little chicks, uh, I made a little chick, but I'll tell you what, I practice and practice, and they were they gave me a lot of trouble. But you could probably come up with your own little strokes for birds. Butterflies are fun, and so are the grasses with flowers growing in the water. Okay, have fun.